Chief Sealer of Weights and Measures, Town Accountant, Town Council, Veterans Agent, Wiring Inspector, Wiring Inspector Assistant, and to vote as to whether to appoint the following individuals for the following positions in terms, Robert Piccarelli, Building Commissioner, slash Inspector, Buildings term to expire on June 30th, 2024, William Kelly, Building Inspector Assistant, term to expire on June 30th, 2022, John Chaves, Police Chief, term to expire on June 30th, 2024. David Moore, Sealer of Weights and Measures, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Sandra Nolan, Town Accountant, term to expire on June 30th, 2024. Larry Mayo, Town Council, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Wilfred Corey, Veterans Agent, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Steve. Stephen Peterson, wire inspector, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Dennis McKinnis, wiring inspector assistant, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. And then the meeting information for Zoom. Is there a motion to reconsider the vote? I move that we reconsider the vote to take it on. Okay. All those in favor, aye. aye. Okay. Passes. Okay. What is the decision of the board? Do you want to? Nominate one by one. We have a list of letters that came in from town current uh, appointees that want to be reappointed. I have one in both that we send a vote that was taken and that we appoint one as they have approved. None of the people have shown that they've caused any problems and not being able to do their job over the past years that I've been here. We've never had a problem with, with individuals. Well, Troy, you know, that's really close to you. Yeah. 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 That's all right, I'll move up closer. Excuse me. In as much as there are not any complaints or written evidence that any of these individuals are not doing their jobs, I vote that we appoint them as listed. Is there a second? 
Not hearing a second. Is there another motion? A motion to go individually down the list. Is there a second? I'll second. All right. So does everyone have a list? Um, oh. All those in favor? Yes. Aye. Against? No. Okay. Motion passes. So, is there a motion? Just Gordon, just to you know, you do have, I mean, you may worry about right them, but you do have letters from a number of the individuals indicating their interest in being reappointed. I don't know if you want to enter those into the record or not. Is there a motion to do so? Where just so you know, um, could I speak for a minute? I have a question about the emergency meeting. Yep. Thank you. Please. My name is Bill from Gallagher. You got to go to a mic. You should be loud enough to vote. Anyway, um, I'm just going to speak for a minute. Anyway, we just had an election in town. We've got some new selectmen on board. We just had an election in town. We've got some new selectmen on board. I'm trying to understand within a week, whatever, we have an emergency meeting called by the selectmen for discussion, I guess, about this. But my question becomes, this is a school day, this is a work day. How are people supposed to come to give their opinions to the selectmen in this town when this is all we have represented in town? I, I understand what the question is about the emergency meeting. The emergency meeting was called because the way the motion was done Tuesday night, it was requested that all of these positions be posted and advertised. Okay, so you so in, in, in so we have a contract with the police chief. So the only way to stop that process was to hold this emergency meeting because we tasked the town administrator with posting these positions by tomorrow. So he would have had to have this done today. Okay. Now, why didn't we do it on Saturday when people were more available um, to discuss it? This is an important thing for this town. And you called an emergency meeting. So, in, work so in, order, in order to stop the deadline from happening, we had to call the meeting. Okay, now you mentioned the police chief. What about all these other people you've listed? So the, all the other positions are up for appointment. There's no contract with them, but there is with the police chief. Okay, so why aren't we addressing the police chief in an emergency meeting and addressing this in a normal town meeting where everyone can come in on a weekend or something? So, so what we did was we took, we took a vote on Tuesday night to post all the positions. When this was brought to our attention by the town administrator, the town administrator suggested we have an emergency meeting to talk about this. So that's what we're doing is having the emergency meeting to yeah. talk about this. Okay, how do the people in the town who have to work, make a living, and uh, especially after going through COVID for the last year, form and base their opinion on the changes you're making to the town? Now, this town has had a problem for a long time with the infighting. It's worse than the, the government between the Democrats and the Republicans. It needs to stop our community, our town, we work together. I have never seen anything like this in the things I've heard around this town. So now we've got people we're putting in that want to have a say in the town. What about the people having a say in the town? So the people did have a say in the I town. They elect to an emergency meeting on a work day as a citizen. I, I understand that, but the people elected the selectmen to make the decision on the appointments. The process had a hiccup. We're trying to fix that. Yes, but you're doing it in secrecy in my mind because we are the people in the town. So how many residents do we have in this town, do you know? Around 8,000. Right. How many people in this room right now? One, two, three, four, five, six, you seven, know, you eight, can give an approximate. There's 30 people maybe in this town and a lot of people have to be here. Yep. So you're putting the town and making decisions with this town with 25 people out of 8,000. I nope. object to that. I, I understand, sir, but the appointments are made by the Board of Selectmen. 
There's, there, there doesn't have to be any public input for this. Okay, then maybe there's other changes that need to happen. Understood. So my objection is noted, we've had a secret meeting. Not it, a, it's not, it's not it's secret. It's not an emergency meeting. It's an emergency, <laughs> sir. It's an emergency meeting because the board put a deadline on the action that the town administrator had to take. So the board can just resend that motion and the deadline's gone. And that's what happened. Okay. You can do it. I've given my opinion. Yep. Thank you. Yes. Hi, I'm sure you all know me, Linda Cole. Um, I just wanted to make sure I sent you all an email and I wanted to make sure that all the board of selectmen had got it. I just want to speak to the fact of almost from a human resources, I know we don't have it in this town, but standpoint of the ramifications of this decision because it could be very costly to the town and the residents um, without proper documentation to not reappoint somebody, you risk lawsuits as well as for sure if we just don't reappoint them because we're claiming that they don't do their job well enough, so they're going to get unemployment. That's unfightable. So yeah. I, I talked to council about this. The appointment ends on that day. There is no guarantee of continued employment for those positions. So Correct, but you do. But the person can come back, has the right to, could come back and have the right to choose to fight it on the basis that there was no grounds but, not to reappoint, that they haven't done that job. But there, there is no requirement that the board appoint. Appointments have well, I, a certain I agree with you, there's no requirement. I'm just saying the possibility of what you're opening the town up to, as well as, for, I know for a fact that the unemployment, unfortunately, because we, we've had cases where people are let go because they can't do the job, and we would all agree that they can't do the job. However, they're still going to get unemployment because you do. A lot of people aren't aware of that. That's something you can't fight. They automatically get it. So I just want to make sure that everybody knew the cost that is possible, let alone the advertising. I mean, now I know you're talking about maybe individual votes, which would help on the advertising costs because the advertising costs would be extreme for this amount of people and what you have to include in the advertisement and how long you have to advertise for. But I just want to make sure before you make any decisions that you're aware of the cost to the town and the residents. Okay. Thank you. Amy? Good morning, everybody. I'd like to ask, um, how long has this been the process that selectmen appoint people to positions in the town? How long is it new? At least 31 years. So are we just finding out about it and that what maybe is what is alarming everybody is that they didn't know that this is what's been going on for 31 years, right? At least. Thank you. Which one of you called this meeting? I did. You did? So right now, Charlie, with that motion to reconsider that vote, and we reconsidered the vote, there's no deadline, correct? Well, there's no deadline for you well, to I act. I assume by the end of the meeting, you'll give whatever orders you want to give okay. in terms of, because I gave you an analysis of three groups of people. We had dealt with the paid positions with terms expiring in June 30th. We had also dealt with the several open seats, seats that are currently on boards and commissions where nobody's there is a vacancy on the elementary school committee, we have a vacancy on the board of health, we have a vacancy on the finance committee, and you're doing a schedule to follow for that. And then we have the, everybody else where they are unpaid positions on boards and commissions, their terms are up, but we have people on there and you also told me what you wanted to follow in terms of the schedule for advertising, notifications, things like that. So, you know, it was, and either, I would expect by the end of this meeting, either you'll say, Charlie, this is correct, or do we want you to do that, or you'll say to me, we want to do something different. Okay. So, 
So we're going to go one by one. So for the first one, I have to recuse myself. So Troy. <laughs> Building Commissioner Inspector Gozi. You have any questions, sir? You have any questions, sir? Ashley? I do not. I have, I have, I have one one question next to the building inspector. Why do you feel you should be reappointed? I feel like I've always done my job to the best of my ability. If it's the board's decision, I'd like to know where they feel I haven't done my job. I love this community. I live in this community. It's a, it's a thankless job, as well as the police, because it's enforcement. So no matter what decision I make, 50% is going to be wrong in the eyes of the public. Unfortunately, in the environment we live in, that 50% has become much more. So. Again, I do the job to the best of my ability. Show me where I haven't done it. And and, and I would like to keep the position. Sir, you have something to say? Yes, thank you. My name is John Day. I serve as counsel for Mr. Piccarelli with regard to this matter of the appointment. Just as a threshold matter, I would I would raise an objection to uh, uh, Select woman Vistessa's involvement in this, this, this particular part of the proceeding. The reason I say that is she just won election to her position after waging a campaign that was full of uh, personal accusations against Mr. Piccarelli, both personally and in his capacity as a building inspector. Now, obviously, those were, that was protected speech within the context of a political campaign. But now she's an elected town official. And I would respectfully suggest that she has a conflict of interest, given the, the manner in which she just raised her campaign by attacking Mr. Piccarelli, but coming in now and voting on whether or not he should be reappointed. I further note that uh, Section um, uh, 3514 of, of this town's uh, plan for uh, employment and compensation and personnel says that uh, the Board of Selectmen are obligated to engage in employment procedures with, quote, uniform interpretation and application. And the reason I point that out is, as was noted a few moments ago, this process of reappointing employees has been going on for at least 31 years. My understanding is this is the first time that a decision such as was made the other night by the Board of Selectmen uh, was made. So it's a new set of circumstances. Again, given uh, what I would suggest are the uh, impermissible conflicts of interest, I can't imagine a Massachusetts Ethics Commission allowing Ms. DeSessa to vote on Mr. Piccarelli's reappointment given the campaign that was just mounted. I would respectfully suggest that it's virtually impossible for the Board of Selectmen to have been found that they were engaging in a uniform interpretation and application of their own rules and own bylaws as it pertains to Mr. Piccarelli. Now, town council, I've been advised, um, has rendered a general opinion that, as a general course, employees at the term, at the end of their term, are entitled to re, uh, or are entitled or not to be reappointed. That's a general principle which I don't necessarily contest. But there are specifics engaged in this particular proceeding. Again, the net nature in which Ms. Desessa mounted a large part of her recent campaign by attacking Mr. Percarelli raises serious legal concerns as to whether or not she can fairly and impartially and with uniform interpretation and application rule on this case. So for that reason, as a threshold matter, I would respectfully uh, request that she recuse herself from this proceeding because she cannot be fair and impartial. Uh, moving more substantively to the qualifications of Mr. Piccarelli, he was unanimously appointed to his position in 2015 
unanimously reappointed in 2018. There's no record of disciplinary history against him. Uh, he's performed his duties uh, faithfully, dutifully, and without without any any uh, any documentation or, or any any record of, of malfeasance or misfeasance. He's fully qualified for the position. That's been noted in his last two appointments, and there are no grounds not to reappoint him. So again, applying the, the town's own obligation to uniformly interpret and, applic and apply its rules with regard to appointment of town officials and town employees, I would respectfully urge the town to or the board of selectmen to reappoint Mr. Piccarelli pursuant to the uh, email I sent this morning and the email you sent yesterday afternoon. Thank you. Great. The only problem we have is if, if the individual is spoken about to recuse themselves from the thing, they don't vote. That's me, a majority of the board. Right, that's uh, that creates a, a problem, uh, uh, Selectman Garen. I, I recognize that, but I think that the the uh, I think that the practical concerns here of the board's problem uh, with regard to I think only having one person that would be you who can fairly and impartially read all this matter. Uh, that problem has to be secondary to Mr. Piccarelli's right to be reappointed. Uh, he's done nothing to not be reappointed. Uh, this is a political vendetta. This is a political move to, uh, to try to take his job away from him, even though, even though he's really performed his job for the past six years. So I would, I would defer to town council as to what the town's official position would be, but I think I can tell you that from my perspective, under the circumstances, which are unique, you could be qualified to render the only vote on this matter. Uh, because uh, you're the only one who is not uh, conflicted out by any ethical considerations with regard to Mr. Pickerell. But I would respectfully suggest again that Mr. Sessa does, does have a conflict of interest that uh, would not pass muster with the Massachusetts Ethics Commission or any of the applicable uh, statutes that, that are applied by that commission. Uh, she has not only, a, a, I would argue, a, an actual conflict of interest given the campaign she just made, but she's also prohibited from engaging in activity that leads to an appearance of a conflict of interest. And while I'm confident the Ethics Commission would find an actual conflict of interest, again, given the, the things that she said on social media and elsewhere during the course of her campaign, I'm confident that rises to the level of an actual conflict, but it, I think it's beyond anybody's reasonable interpretation. It raises the, the appearance of a conflict of interest. Uh, there's no way to count a people that those people with Halifax can believe that she can rule on this matter or, or, or vote on this matter impartially and fairly given the manner in which she spent her recent campaign repeatedly attacking Mr. Piccarelli. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, sir. Hi, good morning. I'm Bert Gaynor. Wait, I just wanted to say as far as Mr. Piccarelli, wrote, I've had experience working with him for the last six years. Uh, I think his knowledge of the field, his, his uh, attention to detail, his, uh, I've had experience as far as uh, dealing with contractors, as well as uh, personal uh, people applying for petitions and whatnot. I've never heard a bad word said about this gentleman. He's extremely knowledgeable. He can he can not only deal with with the people, the applicants themselves, and even those that are they feel that are agreed and that he's misinterpreted. Uh, Mr. Picciarelli will will do the will do his homework. He'll uh, he'll find out about the code. He'll interpret the code. His follow up as far as uh, uh, sending letters off and whatnot, making keeping the, the zoning board of appeals uh, aware of, of the decision making. I've witnessed him personally uh, dealing with not only the applicants and the contractors, but also with, with uh, attorneys who he's able to sit down with our own attorney, explain each step that he's taken, how he interprets it. I'm not saying you know he's infallible, he knows everything, he's, he's not always or been right, but he's open. He's open to hear the interpretations from, from, from different people. Uh, extremely professional. Uh, I've enjoyed working with him uh, in the past. Just, uh, I think it'd be a loss to the town if uh, we didn't reappoint 
uh, Mr. Picciarelli, just my own personal opinion. Thank you. Anyone else? Is there a motion? Charlie, so <clears throat> if I recuse myself from this, power of necessity, no? Okay, well, there's a rule of necessity. Obviously, Attorney Day feels that Mr. Darren is the only person who can vote on this. I'm not an attorney. Um, my understanding is it requires a form of the board to vote. Um, you're not voting, we no longer have a form. Um, that's why the rule of necessity is in place. Um, but that's not, you know, you could always you know, leave it that. Um, I motion to hold the building inspector until we speak with town council. Don't look at me, look at the crowd. <laughs> you want to hold the decision on reappointment until you speak to town council? We've had sufficient evidence put forward that the person's doing the job. And has done the job. And I understand that some people may be upset, be it irate, because the decisions weren't made in their direction. But the fact is that he has made numerous decisions, and very few that have come back as a lawsuit or any complaint. I mean, after attorney the day just sat up here and said all he had to say about me, I'm not voting on this. <laughs> so moved. So you're yeah, sorry, you're moving your second second. Are you setting a date for this coming back to another meeting? Or are you going to attend a talk to town council between now and June first or another date? I guess my question is at some point when you say talk to town council, does that so we'll move it to Tuesday? Does, does the board does? Let's move it to Tuesday's meeting and then I'll talk to Larry. Okay. So, yeah, so what would happen is you're going to you have a move in there in a second to table this until the meeting on June 1st. In the meantime, we'll talk to town council about it. If I have to recuse myself. And then if you do have to recuse yourself, also the question of how should be asked town council if you have two members recusing themselves, how does the rule of necessity work and whether Mr. Darren can be the only person voting on it? Correct. Yes. I have a question. Is everybody just being up to be appointed? Are we just looking for applications to interview people and have a choice on all of them? Is that what's going on? Well, in all honesty, I've never went through this process in the time that I've sat on the board. The board has appointed without information from the audience or anything of that nature. It's based on evaluations, terminations, and whether or not there's anything legal or anything that's going on okay. with that individual at the time. So isn't it just about interviews? Because like, uh, for instance, on the beautification committee, we had a landscaping contract up. It wasn't anything against CMAC, but we went out to get bids just to be ethical and honest and give everybody a shot at sponsoring the Peg Fitzgerald Garden. So they ended up being the only bidder, but we put it out there to the community to see if anybody else would be interested in it. And that's merely opening it up in democracy and transparency and saying, hey, listen, here's all these positions that are available in the town of Halifax. Anybody who's looking for a job who might be interested in one of these jobs can throw in an interview, throw in an application and have an interview. I would actually say that would be the proper process for anything to make sure that we are being open and honest with the Halifax residents and taxpayers. Are you, are you saying that we have not been open and honest about what's going on? No, I'm just saying like it'd be a great What you're thing. talking about is you're talking about a contractor, someone outside of the town that's doing work because of a bid. Well, isn't it a good thing to have choice? 
it, you know, so something. it's not personal. I just think that it should be done every year. Well, it, it, it should it, be done every year. That's my opinion. We just found out about it now, right? This is this is the first time I knew about all these appointings. So it's an enlightening thing. Unfortunately, there are individuals who don't show up at town meeting or selectmen's meetings or anything that makes themselves aware of what's going on behind the scenes. I have. And So, we will vote. So, as we move, Troy seconded to table this to June 1st with the expectation that Ashley will be consulting with Larry Mayo on the questions of her voting on this. And if she's not able to vote, how the rule of necessity applies on this. This is for the appointment of our fairly to building inspector for a term for three years. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Does the board want to table all the discussions until June first? We're not going to hit the we're not going to hit the deadline to post for Friday, and that's what this. I have a motion to approve the police chief tonight. Reappoint the police chief. Make a motion to appoint. I would read out at the bottom. I would read out if you're going to make that motion. I motion to reappoint police chief John Shaves. Uh, term expire on June 30th, 2024. Is there a second? Second. Any further discussion? All those in favor, aye. All right. Aye. Okay. Is there any others that you want to do today? Or do you want to hold all of them off until? Town of County, Town Council, Veterans Agent, Fire Inspector. No list of some conflict. I think we should vote on those. Okay. Is there a motion for assistant building inspector, uh, building inspector assistant? I move it. So, Troy, you're moving that we and Kelly be appointed as building inspector for a term next file on June 3, 2022. As was stated. Is there a second? I second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Passes unanimously. Is there a motion for seal or weights and measures? Move it. A second. David Moore, seal of weights and measures for a term to expire on June 30th, 2022. That's the motion? Yes. Second. All those in favor, aye. Aye. Town accountant. So Sandra Nola, town accountant, term to expire on June 30th, 2024. Is there a motion? Move it. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Larry Mayo, Town Council, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Is there a motion? So moved. Is there a second? <laughs> okay. <laughs> Hearing no second, we'll move on. Wilfred Corey, veterans agent, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Move it. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. aye. Unanimous. Steve Peterson, wire inspector, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Move it. Second. Any further discussion? All in favor, aye. aye. Unanimous. Dennis McCannis, wire inspector, assistant, term to expire on June 30th, 2022. Is there a motion? Move it. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. Aye. Mr. Chairman, in terms of town council, um, if, on the building, I'm not sure you've indicated how you want to handle that and table it to June 1st, and we'll return to that subject for meeting on June 1st. 
what procedures do you want me to do regarding the town council? You, um, in the past, when we had a change, the board has issued a request for proposals for legal services. Do you want me to do the same? If so, when would be the deadline for the response? I'm assuming that you're a trade-aided officer be welcome to send in a response to request for proposals, but um, I don't know what deadline you want me to follow and what, how you want to deal with from that point. If you post it next week, you're not going to get it in today, right? Well, in terms of the advertising, one of the weird things about legal services is it falls outside of state procurement law. So I don't have to advertise, for instance, in a local paper or in combine or visit services. I probably would, for instance, the MMA bulletin, but also now it would be up on the town's website today. It would be on um, et cetera. I would do what I can do today. If the board might and might to put in the express, I'm happy to put in the express with the next Friday. Um, usually for anything like an RFP or a job application, we try to wait two weeks till after it shows up in the express. That would be what the fourth, eleventh, eighteenth. Okay. Mr. Yes. Chair? Yes, sir. How is the fact that Ash is going to consult the consult council if we don't have one on board. <laughs> we, we have one on. Excuse, excuse me. Excuse me. He's still appointed. He's still he's still appointed until June thirtieth. And going out and getting bids on legal services. No, it won't be bids. You're well, proposals. Proposals. And when do we propose to interview these individuals? I think that's what Charlie was asking. With the 22nd? We can do that. I mean, how much time do you want to leave for each interview? Well, the last time the board interviewed legal firms that held a special meeting. Mm -hmm. So, well, the special meeting to interview and do half, a, half an hour for each one. So, what date would you like to do that then? How about the 24th of June? Sure. We don't have any templates. I suspect I'm going to come back to you all and simply say I want to carry over a lot of vacation at this point. Um, we have nothing on the 24th right now in terms of other meetings yeah. or other appointments and stuff. So are you doing this daytime evening? What works for the board? We should do it at night so more people can come show up and listen. Start at 6.30? Sure. Perfect. And again, so how long for the interviews in the terms of government? How many minutes do you want per firm? I would say 30 minutes. Okay. I can do that. Okay. Is there anything else on the... Well, I provided, I mentioned uh, the schedule for the other two groups of people. These are the seats on the Board of Health, uh, School Committee, and Finance Committee. The expectation was that um, we were going to be scheduling it. We scheduled all the interviews for June 8th with a deadline date of June 2nd for submission of the Cal Bank forms. I don't know how long we want to devote for each candidate. In some cases, we may have one person who is interested in serving on one or more boards. Obviously, we wouldn't interview the person two or three times. Um, I'll ask the Board of Health and the elementary school committee to attend the interviews that night, and that we would include a possible vote on filling the vacancies that night. Okay. Mind you, we already have one place in there's a reopening situation. I think we're having three, though I don't have a third official letter indicating okay. vacancy. Um, we can be able to go. The finance committee has recommended three people. I don't know that they're going to be meeting between, they might meet on June 7th. Okay. Um, if we get a town bank form from anybody in between, I will schedule an interview with them, even if the finance committee hasn't had an interview yet. Um, so that's that group there. Then for all the other unpaid volunteer positions, 
I think after this meeting, begin the process of notifying those individuals that they can reapply for their positions on the boards and commissions. Uh, we would have a deadline date of, I believe, June 9th for submission of town bank forms. And then you're scheduled right now for interviews with these people on June 15th. Um, so I need to get an idea from the board both for June 8th and June 15th, how long you want to set aside for each interview. And also, the list of the unpaid positions is fairly lengthy. I'm not sure, for instance, whether you want all police officers to come in as licensing agents. So you might want to take a quick glance at the list that PAMs provide and tell Pam and myself if there's any positions for which you do not need people to come in for interviews. Yeah. <coughs> All right, is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Okay, I, you haven't given me any direction. I thought we, we already voted those. Well, so you did, but so I, I thought we only considered. I appreciate you just I appreciate you just tell me yes, we're doing it this way. I didn't hear any objections to what I was saying, but I want to make sure that this is what the board, so I'm confirming with the board what they did on Tuesday. If it's right, that's fine. I'll, I'll move ahead with that. Charlie, do you need to know right now if we're not going to call these people in? Is that what you're asking? Well, no, yeah, so yeah, yeah, because the next meeting is June 8th, and you're doing it then. Right. Um, so if you're not going to ask, for instance, the police officers to come in, then the schedule will change. So if you're asking all these people to come in, including the police officers, for example, then we'll set up the agenda accordingly. I'll note, for instance, with the police officers, they probably would consider that to be right. on the job. So it would be a three hour minimum of overtime. I would say we don't need the police officers or the matrons. That's my motion. Okay. Is there a second? Sorry. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Otherwise, I will follow what I've written out to the board for today's meeting. All right. Is there a motion to adjourn? Motion to adjourn. Is there a second? Second. All in favor, aye. 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 aye.